Welcome to the next in our series of key diagram videos, uh, taking a few minutes to think about some of the absolutely key diagrams you can draw in your A-level and IB economics to get yourself those top marks for analysis. And keep in mind that good analysis always helps achieve better evaluation. The two go together. In this video, let's spend a little time together thinking about consumer and producer surplus and the impact of an indirect tax, obviously a key form of government intervention. So I'll be using the right-hand diagram in a little while. Let's focus on the left-hand diagram. Think about a market where the original market price and quantity is P1 and Q1. The market is in equilibrium, equilibrium at point B. Then uh, before, we, before we look at the tax, the, the total welfare is the area A, B, C, which is the sum of consumer and producer surplus. Now, well, let's assume that the government introduces a specific tax, so there was a set tax per unit on the producer, and that of course causes an upward shift, an inward shift of supply to the new supply curve. The tax per unit is the vertical distance between those two supply curves. As a result of the tax, the market equilibrium changes, the quantity contracts from Q1 to Q2, the market price goes up from P1 to P2. So we have a new equilibrium in the market. Now, the effect of a tax is to reduce consumer surplus, partly because there's a fall in quantity consumed from Q1 to Q2, but also there's now a, a smaller gap between the price being charged, P2, and the area underneath the demand curve. So this indirect tax reduces the consumer surplus from ABP1 to ADP2. Consumer surplus is down. Now, the original producer surplus was the area P1, BC, the area above the supply curve and below the price. The producer charges P2, but that's not the price the producer keeps, because of course the government will get the tax. So in fact, the producer only gets price P3 after the tax. So they're now selling quantity Q2 at a price of P3. Now that's down in both terms. They're selling less and they're getting a lower price. So therefore the producer surplus must have gone down. Can you see what the area is going to be? Producer surplus, I'm just going to throw, throw in an extra letter to help you. Producer surplus drops to the new area shown by P3EC. Now, so consumer surplus is down. Producer surplus is down. There must have been a transfer involved. And of course, the key is that there is an area of tax revenue equal to the area P2D. Uh, sorry, that should be P2DEP3. I'm going to change that. P2DEP3 is the area of government tax revenue. I'm getting my letters confused. That's the area of tax going to government. Some of it's paid by the consumer, the top bit, from P1 to P2. Some of it's paid by the producer from P1 down to P3. So there we go. There's a fall in uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus. But quite a bit of it goes to the government in the form of tax. Now, what about the deadweight welfare loss? So let me replicate across to uh, this side. Uh, those points, those letters, those prices and quantities that we had on the left-hand side. Just because the diagram gets a little complicated, I just wanted to focus on this. An indirect tax leads to a deadweight loss of welfare. In other words, the total level of consumer and producer surplus has gone down. And that welfare loss, can you spot it? It's the area DBE. The quantity has gone down. The price has gone up, but the price the producer gets is now down to P3. That's a welfare, deadweight welfare loss. And if you get a question on indirect taxes, this is a good area to think about in terms of your uh, consideration of the welfare effects of a tax. Now, indirect taxes normally do cause a deadweight loss of welfare because consumers face higher prices and producers or suppliers, they experience a loss of revenue after the tax has been paid. But in terms of evaluation, the key issue is what's being done, or what is done with the government tax revenue. So the government's going to generate tax revenue. So how is it, how is it spent? Might it be ring fence, for example, for one or more socially beneficial purposes? And students might also consider as part of their evaluation why an indirect tax was introduced in the first place. A good example there would be some kind of pollution tax or emissions tax, uh, sometimes called a Peguvian tax, based on the polluter pays principle. The argument being the tax, uh, the polluter, so that their private costs reflect more accurately the external costs of their, of their activities. 
So do please consider externalities and social welfare in your analysis and your evaluation. Okay, there we go. That was a quick video on consumer and producer surplus and the impact of indirect taxes.